Welcome to the Christian Woman Leadership Podcast, where we hope to inspire you to embrace your God-given gifts, skills, and passions in order to lead with confidence. We want you to remember that you are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God, and you are fully loved by Him. You have been designed on purpose by God with unique gifts and passions in order to love and lead those around you. I'm your host, Esther Littlefield, a pastor's wife, business owner, mom, and writer. And I'm Esther's co-host, Holly Kane. I'm a wife, mom, and business owner. I also write at hollycane.org, where I focus on my passion for women's ministry. Together, we chat about important issues that Christian women leaders face. In addition, we interview other women just like you who lead in various roles from church to community to business. Through this podcast, we offer you encouragement, tools, and resources to help you on your leadership journey. We are so glad you're here with us. Welcome to episode 190 of the Christian Woman Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Esther Littlefield, and I am so glad that you are here today. Are there times that you want to speak up in a meeting, but you're not sure how to share your ideas with confidence? Do you ever wonder why your voice isn't being heard? Or have you felt ignored or dismissed by peers or other leaders in your organization in the past? In today's conversation, I am speaking with Karen Laus. Karen is a keynote speaker and leadership coach, equipping women to stand out with confidence. She champions female business leaders to own their value and find their voice so they can be seen and heard. She also works with teams to create cultures of trust and function at their best. So in our chat today, Karen helps us understand the value of speaking up and why just feeling confident or faking it is not enough. Karen also shares why you shouldn't wait for a public speaking opportunity on stage to start working on your skills. Along the way, she provides several practical tips that you can implement into your own leadership right away. I know you're going to love hearing from Karen and you're going to find some takeaways no matter how you lead. Now, before we dive in, let me share with you about the sponsor for today's episode. This episode is brought to you by my Uplift Mentormind, which Karen happens to be a part of. This is a program designed exclusively for Christian women who are building a business online and who are ready to thrive, streamline their marketing and hit their financial goals. To learn more, you can visit upliftmentormind.com and just click apply and find out if you are a fit for the program. You can also send me a DM on Instagram if you're curious and just let me know you're interested or let me know if you have questions about the program. I'm happy to chat. All right, friend, let's dive into our conversation with Karen all about overcoming self-doubt and speaking up with confidence. All right. Well, welcome, Karen, to the podcast. I am super excited to be chatting with you today. So to kick us off, can you just start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Yes, absolutely. I'm originally from Minneapolis, but it was always a dream of mine to move to California. So I think about when I was a kid, I was looking through all the magazines and things about being in a beach and how fun that would be. And (laughs) it's kind of funny that I'm in San Francisco because for anybody that's familiar with San Francisco... We are not sitting here on the beach, but Mm -hmm. it is still on the beach. And yet it's been my dream to live here. I basically threw all my stuff in the trunk of my car and (laughs) did a road trip and never left. So it was very kind of semi-spontaneous thing, Mm -hmm. but started in human resources here and then quickly realized that I love the entrepreneurial spirit. And I know you and I have that in common. So after a 20 plus corporate year career. Well, actually now I'm getting into lots of detail, but basically I left corporate twice is the bottom line. So I've always on the side had a coaching business pretty much ever since I started out, but it wasn't until July, 2020 that I officially left my corporate job and started off on my own. My focus is corporate women over 40 in senior leadership roles who hold back from sharing their ideas due to self-doubt and what I help them do. And this is really my story, essentially, as they say, you know, you coach yourself from several years past is to help them with their presence as well as their message. So my 
whole mission. I'm really on a mission to reach 10 million women to overcome self-doubt and speak with confidence instead. So Mm. that's a little bit about me. Awesome. Yeah. And I know that the women listening to this podcast, a lot of them are going to resonate with what you talk about and what you share. And that's one of the big reasons I wanted to have you on in addition to knowing you and just feeling connected to you and wanting to help share your message. So What we always like to hear about is a little bit about your leadership journey. So I know you shared kind of bits and pieces there about a little bit of your journey, but can you take us back in time and maybe tell us if there was a time when you realized you were a leader? Well, I would say that's probably in high school. (laughs) Okay. It's funny because, you know, at home, I was always trying to be the compliant little girl, just trying to get my dad's approval. But at school... I was definitely in charge in certain such scenarios. I was still a little bit reserved, but in my corners or in my pockets of places, I felt like a leader. So I was president of a, a couple different clubs. And one of those was also my senior year, I was president of the class. And <laughs> so mm-hmm. I just remember I loved being in charge of things, probably because I still to this day have an issue with control. Like, oh, <laughs> I learned very quickly that, oh, those people that are leading are the ones that get to call the shots. So I would like to call the shots. But I would say that that early start, especially around my speaking interest, as well as speaking skills started at a very early age, for sure. I always had this confidence of I could do whatever I wanted, which is interesting because at the same time, there were certain areas where I would really hold back from not letting my true self come to the party because I was so afraid of people not accepting me for exactly who I was. But I knew that if I offered value to people, mostly on that professional side or the more skill-based side, that got me things. <laughs> so <laughs> I just know that that's how I started out. Yeah. So that's really where I would say I felt like, oh yeah, I get this leadership thing and I actually like it. Yeah. So take us forward a little bit in, you mentioned working in corporate as well as starting your own business a couple of (laughs) times. So what are some of the leadership lessons you have learned along the way, whether it was in the corporate setting or in running your own business? Sure. Well, I think specifically about how to talk about what you do that attracts people or doesn't attract people. And specifically when I left corporate the first time, which was in 2003, I had been in HR. I knew that I wanted to start my business and I started going to networking events because that's what you did at the time. Specifically, I went to the Chamber of Commerce events and anything in San Francisco I could find. And I used to say, and I kind of laugh that it's actually still on that original business card I have. I used to say on the bottom of the card, it says life, career, business coaching. And (laughs) talk about being unspecific. And so, and what I would actually say to people is something like, I help everybody make their life better. (laughs) That was just so great. (laughs) But clearly why I went out of business first year is because I was not clear on who I was serving and giving them what specifically it was that I did and how I could help. Yeah. And so when I started saying, I work with corporate women over 40 who are stressed out and depleted, that's one of the ways that I started talking about it. People would go, can you coach me? Suddenly everybody got excited about it, even just that small thing. Mm -hmm. So I learned the importance of being specific in what you want who you serve and the problem you solve. Mm, Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. I know another thing that you've shared about that I love hearing about is how you started to speak up in the corporate setting. And I know that's part of what you coach women on. So would you mind sharing a little bit of that story of how you started to recognize the need to use your own voice in the corporate setting? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it actually starts with something I probably haven't shared with you offline, which was my boss at the company where I worked for 14 years. A few years in, she said, not even a few years, maybe a couple of years in, she said, your voice, like what you, your ideas matter. Basically, she said, we want to hear more from you. And I thought, oh gosh, okay. So essentially she just said, speak up more in meetings. You've got great ideas. 
And so I started doing that, but it got easier. But then the condition for me was if I was either invited to speak or I was in charge. So when I managed people, I had no problem speaking up. But the challenge was then later when I was promoted to our senior leadership team, that was the moment that I'm still mortified by today when I think about, but it is what really made me turn the corner. I was asked to speak about something. We had just talked about it, all of my peers, and there were seven of us on the leadership team. And my boss had said, oh yeah, that's a good, why don't we do that, that thing? And without getting into detail, I just remember feeling like that doesn't seem... I didn't quite feel aligned with it. And so I remember sitting then, but felt like, well, she's my boss. That's what I learned. She's the one who calls the shots. So I need to do what she says. Even though I didn't feel aligned, I did my best to prepare. And that was the moment where I was sitting there in this boardroom and they were all looking at me and I just felt paralyzed because I was so unaligned with what we were talking about. And she actually shut down the meeting in a very wonderful way. But she said, hey, why don't we table this? Because she could tell I was struggling. Everybody could tell I was struggling. And that's when after she goes, she pulled me into her office and she goes, look, this was a perfect example where you didn't trust your gut. And that had been a theme of mine for a few years that she had been coaching me on. And she said, you know, you could have just said, I don't even know why we started talking about this months ago let's table it. And I, that was such an aha moment for me from the perspective of, wow, I could have just done that and that would have been okay. But the bigger piece of this to me is that I said, I'll never be in this spot again. This was so embarrassing. And so the bigger piece from that embarrassment is what made me go, okay, I have to work more diligently on this because this was even after I had been in growth groups and things to really work on stuff. in my life. And that's what then caused me. So just turning this into a tip now for anybody listening, I started with baby steps. So for me, what I started doing is saying, here's my vote in meetings, because I'm the one that you would usually come to the meeting and say, what do you all think? And that's another thing my boss called me out on. She goes, I don't know, Karen, what do you think? She said, you always come to these meetings and you ask us, but you don't ever share your opinion. And that just felt scary to me because of feeling judged and rejected and and all of that. So that's what I started doing is saying, here's my vote. Yeah, I love that. Just very simple tip that makes it feel a little bit easier to chime in when you're a little bit unsure about what you, how it'll be received. So thank you for that tip. Yeah. (laughs) So good. Yeah. Uh, I can tell too that you've had some mentors along the way. So you mentioned your boss. We always like to talk about leadership mentors because I think, I don't think most of us are just born naturally, you know, (laughs) good at everything, right? And just like women aren't born naturally, always being able to speak up in, in meetings. But are there mentors, aside from the boss that you just mentioned, that have really kind of guided your leadership journey along the way? Yeah, definitely. Well, sadly, one of them just passed away. Mm -hmm. And that is this really significant influential teacher that I had when I started speaking in high school. And he instilled so much confidence in me. And what that means to me is that, and I think about anybody thinking about the mentors that you have, that he made me believe that I could do it by his encouragement. And knowing that I was accepted for exactly who I was. And I've come to learn more and more through my also lots of work with Dr. John Townsend, who wrote the book Boundaries. I used to be in a leadership group with him. And I remember learning from his book, How People Grow, that no one will, well, I'm putting my own words to it, but a person won't typically grow unless they really believe that they're accepted right now for who they are. And I didn't feel that in my home, especially with my dad not with my mom, but anyhow, I digress. But he's been a a wonderful mentor for me for many years. And then from the business perspective, the coaching, when I first started out, I had my very first coach. I remember us having a conversation when I was trying to decide if I should work with him or not. And he said, well, what, this was, this was over 20 years ago. He said something like, so kind of like that question, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? And I said, oh, 
I would sing like Mariah Carey. Now that's what you can tell what age <laughs> this was, but she's still around. But yeah. I remember <laughs> saying that and his question was so mm. fabulous. He goes, can you sing like her? And I said, no. <laughs> he said, okay, well, fair enough. But he was the first coach that I ever had. And he's the one that actually made me realize I wanted to be a coach. But mm -hmm. I loved his question of just what that did for me is just the fact that he even thought that that was possible was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> what a cool thing. I mean, most people would go, ah, no, <laughs> that's not happening. So those are a couple of people that come to mind. Yeah. And of course I can't not say you oh. <laughs> because you have been so helpful in my whole online space. I mean, I knew so little about the online space and you have really given structure to that. So mm. I appreciate you for that. Oh, thank you. So I want to talk a little bit about the issue of speaking up because a lot of the women that are listeners to this podcast, you know, they are leading a lot of times if they're leading in churches, they're leading in rooms with a lot of men and they might even be the only woman in the room and, or there might be women leading in corporate settings, like you were describing as well as running their own businesses. So there's a lot of different scenarios that we're talking about here, but all of them require us to speak up and to do so with confidence. So I'd love for you to start by telling us why do you think it's important for women to speak up and to use their voice in these different types of scenarios? Yeah, well, first of all, it's important to be heard. That to me is, is so important and it's important for our confidence. But I wanna lead with something that I find sort of comical. You know, when people talk about, and I'm not trying to put anybody down, but when we talk about public speaking, a lot of people look at this like, oh, public speaking is this big deal. And I get that it is, but it's the perception that we have because the truth is the other question I would pose to people is, is there really such a thing as private speaking? Because unless you're talking to yourself in the shower or in the car, we always have an audience. So why I bring that up is because I am really passionate about helping women to shift their mind or change their mindset that it's not about, oh, I need these skills for when I do a public speaking thing. These skills, if you integrate them now into your day-to-day -day conversations, then you're going to have them when you actually have a higher stakes presentation. And it won't be as scary because you will have practiced them. You'll be very aware of how you come across, especially as you know, I always recommend people record themselves. And when you hear how you sound, you know how you look, it's not gonna be as big of a deal later, especially when you know a lot of people listening, I'm sure are doing videos for your businesses as well. So lots of, lots of different ways that it's important because, well, first of all, we need business, <laughs> but also we want to show our true selves. And I think there's nothing more freeing than being able to share your ideas without hesitation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then let's shift to talking about the confidence piece because that's a big theme in your, in your work is how do we, how do we show up with confidence. So I think there's a lot of women who maybe are willing to share their ideas, but they don't do so confidently. So can you tell us what it looks like? Like, what does confidence look like to you when you see someone showing up with confidence? What would that look like? Yeah, this reminds me of some research that we did when I was at my last job around leadership presence, that most people can't define it but they know it when they see it. And there was a specific executive at Visa when we were doing our research that said that. She goes, I don't know, but here, I do know when I see it. And this is something that I wanna try to debunk the mystery in a sense of, you know, when people talk about, oh, that person's really got presence or that person's really polished. Well, all of these things can be measured to some degree. So I like to map the actual behavior to how it relates. So for example, you know that I have a talk called the three C's to command any room with confidence. One of those C's is credibility. So how do we show that we're credible? Well, one of the biggest ones is through our voice. But most of us don't think about how we speak. We just start talking. We don't think about creating variety so that we're not monotone. 
We don't think about having conviction in our voice where we speak with a period and have a declarative tone rather than a questionable tone. (laughs) Because imagine, obviously, if I did the interview like this, it would sound like I wasn't really sure what I was talking about. So (laughs) we have to make sure that we are punctuating when we speak. And all this stuff takes a lot of focus. It really does. So I don't want to let this conversation go away without us saying that it takes intention. It takes work. It's simple, but it's challenging. And most people don't see the payoff until after the fact, or they realize later that they've had missed opportunities. So to me, that's the biggest problem is that there isn't a compelling enough reason to change for most people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, like you said, it's one of those things that most of us, when we think of the word confidence, I think we think of, like you said, sort of this ambiguous, undefinable quality that somebody has (laughs) that you can't really, like it, it doesn't always feel like there's hard skills to it, yes. right? Yes. It seems like it when it's talked about, it's more of an internal feeling that someone has that right. comes through in the way that they present themselves. But what you're saying is there are actual hard skills. There are actual things that you can do with your tone of voice or your body language or just different elements of how you present yourself that will show up as confidence. Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> to me, the, the, so for what? For 18 years, I coached people specifically on their presentation skills and their, their how they communicate. So I know that you can seem confident, even if you're not. And we all know the phrase, fake it till you make it or act as if. But my heart and why I left corporate is to not only help people with those skills, but my dream would be for all women to feel so aligned internally that they actually feel confident and are confident that they know that they know that they know, not just that they come across as confident. But we have to take action to practice that and to get better. And that's why I love coaching people because, especially on video, because then you immediately see your blind spots. And then you can go, okay, I'm going to tweak a couple of things here. And then we do it again. And then suddenly within five minutes, people actually feel more confident because now they know what to do differently. And then you practice that over time. And suddenly you start going, oh, I've actually got this. And now I actually feel confident because I know. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to throw a question out. It might be a little bit of a sensitive topic. So (laughs) you can tell me if this is like, if you don't want to go there, but one of the things I hear from women, and this is often more in the church world than the business world is that they don't feel like their voice is heard. They don't feel like their opinion counts. And so there's certainly an element of the dynamics of an organization that would influence that. But I'm wondering if in your experience, if there could also be an element of a woman may not be showing up (laughs) in a professional way or in the presence that you're describing, and maybe that is impacting whether or not her voice is going to be heard. Yeah, absolutely. That one. <laughs> oh, I love this question. This, I, this is one of my favorites because I do sort of joke with people like, you know, like when I talk about how to interrupt or how to handle interruptions, sometimes I will say, here's all, here's all of the techniques that you could use, but maybe there's another reason why people are interrupting you. And to the point of recognizing that sometimes we, if we, for example, let, let me just go with an example. Let's say you're in a meeting yourself and you're listening to someone else. And they sort of um, come across, um, so um, I have this idea um, to share, uh, you know, when we listen to someone like that, immediately our brain says, not credible, not taking us somewhere. I don't have time for this. You know, all the things that make us not want to listen to that person. And this is why I so recommend recording, especially the more you can record yourself in a real life scenario, then you can start noticing the patterns that you have, even getting monotone, for example. But going back to your your question, I would recommend if you are at all thinking, oh, that might be me, or I don't know if that's me, 
starting strong is the best thing you can do because the rest is more forgivable later. But when we start weak in our voice and even our eye contact kind of going, if our eyes are going all over the room, it looks like we're untrustworthy, like we're doubting ourselves, like we're not confident. And then the voice is so important though. I feel like above all else, I would focus on your voice and just take a deep breath right before you're going to speak and just speak. Like, don't be afraid to project because the lack of projection along with some of the halting in our speech and then the filler words, it just takes away. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's because I always say I'm, you know, I'm the nicest person. I feel like I can be very accepting. I really love people to feel heard, but if I sense that somebody is not taking me somewhere, I, and I get very impatient with customer service reps on the phone. Sometimes <laughs> I'm a little bit of a different person. I'm like, I know you're using a script. Just yes. talk to me. But anyhow, really being mindful of our presence can make a huge difference in people deciding if they want to keep listening. Yeah. Okay. So when we are thinking about the woman who is needing to speak up in a meeting, needing to share her ideas, needing to con- convey a message effectively, what are some of the signs that she should look for that she's not conveying effectively? Are there any like signs? I know you've kind of already given me some tips there with what you just talked about, but any other signs that she could look for that signal she's not presenting herself in the way that she wants to? I'm thinking about in the moment, you're talking about in the moment and that this is, challenging because (laughs) probably the first thing I would say is to make sure to remember to breathe because we underestimate. And sometimes we just, again, most of us aren't wired this way to think like this. And I've been trained to do it. So I'm thinking about it all the time, but we don't recognize that our voice is actually being supported by our entire body. So before recognizing those things, take care to sit up straight in your chair to not be squished down because if your diaphragm is squished with the way you're sitting, like if you're crossing your legs and if you're leaning forward and you have your hands clasped, it's going to be really hard to breathe properly. And then if you're not breathing properly, your voice will probably not come across with enough projection. And then, so one thing I, I would say that a person could sense in the moment, let's say you're talking too fast or you just notice that you're not breathing, taking that time to pause is also a direct reflection of credibility because this is hard because many of us, when we're speaking, we feel like we just want to get it over with. And when we pause, it feels like a lifetime. But to our audience, it actually gives space to absorb what we just said. It shows that we're in control. And when we're in control as the one speaking, the audience can feel at ease because they believe that you're in control Mm. and pausing is a beautiful way to do that. So I would say, but it's really hard to be an objective observer of yourself while you're talking and remember what you're trying to say. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So this is why I always recommend the recording element. So you can look and go, oh, wow, I didn't even feel nervous, but wow, I didn't come across well there. Mm. Or it could be the total opposite of I was so nervous for that meeting, but you couldn't tell that my voice was shaking. And I, I'd i say too, that's also a really important thing to trust yourself related to that because even if your voice shakes or you might be hesitant, it might actually be better than you think. But if we trust and believe our thoughts about how we're coming across without checking that out with reality, then we could make up a whole story that mm-hmm. we're not good. And yet we're probably better than we think. Yeah, so true. And I even think about, I'm thinking about scenarios when I was working in the, in my social work field, you could always, after a meeting, talk to your supervisor or someone else that was part of the meeting and say, Hey, how did I come across in that meeting? Like you're, you're saying, get some objective feedback. And if you go to your leader and ask for feedback, A, they're going to be really impressed with that, Yes, <laughs> that you sought that out. And B, they're hopefully going to give you some tips or some thoughts that you might not have seen for yourself. So I love yes. that guidance to get the objective feedback and to stay away from making up the story in our head, because that, yes. <laughs> that is, <Yes. laughs> we come up with all kinds of things that 
probably most of the people in the room are not thinking, but we're thinking it. <laughs> exactly. Well, and that's why I half the time I feel like I'm talking out of two sides of my mouth because I talk so much about trusting yourself, trust your gut. This is the one place that I say, don't trust yourself until you watch the recording or you get feedback from someone else because yeah. it's so easy to make up how bad we are because we're just naturally our own worst critics. Yeah, yeah, so good. Okay, so kind of switching gears a little bit, I'd love for you to share maybe some of the benefits, some of the great things that can happen when someone starts speaking up and starts using confidence in the way that they speak and share their message? Yeah, well, first of all, there's a great internal freedom that comes from it. When you get to a point where you're not dependent upon what someone else thinks, that's certainly been my journey and it's been incredibly freeing. It's one of those things for me, it's not like I had this moment where it just suddenly I felt that way. But I think with growth, what happens is you're working on it and then a situation comes up where you reacted differently than you would have in the past. And you go, oh, wow, I wasn't nervous for that. Or wow, I actually was able to say it with like, here's my vote or here's what I think without worrying about it. So I feel like those are some things that are very helpful. And then the other thing for sure is that you'll stop missing opportunities that maybe you didn't even know you weren't getting. And that's what's hard to measure because sometimes we don't know where we might've been overlooked for a promotion or a role in a, a church scenario or you know, a client might even yeah. decide they don't wanna work with us, but they're not gonna say, well, I didn't like the way you spoke. I mean, that's just not <laughs> what we do. We just right. say no thanks and we move on to the next person. So one of the things that I wanted to share is a really great aha moment for one of my clients. And this was with somebody in the corporate space, senior leader, engineer, very much an introvert. And she had told her boss, who was so supportive, female boss also just said, I'd love to give her more opportunities. And the company hired me to coach her. So I was in contact with the boss. And interestingly enough, the client herself said to me and to the group, because it was in a group coaching scenario, she said, you know, I've just got some really helpful feedback. And I love that she didn't take it too personally. But basically, when she reminded her boss, I want to get a new position somewhere else in the company, her boss went back to one of her peers and said, so what do you think of so-and-so? We'll call her Jan. You know, what do you think of Jan? And, and the, the boss, other boss said, I can't even make an assessment because she never turns on her camera and she doesn't contribute in meetings. So how would I possibly know <laughs> if she's somebody that I think would be a fit? So she was missing opportunities. And as a result of that, just the simple act of turn out and turn on your camera, people, if you're not. <laughs> and I'd say most of us are doing that now. But yeah. the other thing that I recommend is, and it was funny because she said, I don't, the client herself said, I just feel like if I don't have something to say, why should I talk? I don't have a problem speaking up if I have something to say. So are you telling me I need to make up something? And basically I said, yes, like, <laughs> people, even if you say, I agree, but the trick that I prefer, my hack for this is to speak first. Don't wait until three or five other people have spoken and there's not really anything new to say start first. It's scary, but it's also, first of all, you get it over with right away. I find that it follows really beautifully along with Mel Robbins five second rule. Mm -hmm. So if people aren't familiar with Mel Robbins. It's that, you know, within five seconds, we've got to take action. Otherwise we probably won't. We'll doubt ourselves or make up some reason in our head to not mm -hmm. do the thing. So yeah. that's what I would say. Okay. So good. I think that those who are listening are just, you're giving so many like great golden nuggets of advice. And this is just a really, really tiny sampling of what you get when you work with Karen. So I just want to give that plug that if you're liking what she's sharing for tips, you're definitely going to want to look at working with her. So oh, as you. we get ready to kind of wrap up, you know, one of the things that we believe here is that leaders are learners and we always are constantly learning. And I know that's the case for you. So is there a book or a podcast or just something you've been learning recently that you would want to share that you think might benefit our audience? Gosh, 
where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will go with a fan favorite, Brene Brown. Mm-hmm. I not that long ago took her dare to lead two day certification or the, the rather not, I didn't become certified, but I was in the two day program mm. and she just has so many powerful things to say. So I would definitely recommend her book, Dare mm. to Lead yeah. for those people that are interested in, in more leadership and really the, the heart and soul kind of leader not the, you know, the old fashioned <laughs> autocratic <laughs> leadership that we had mm-hmm. many, many years ago, but really to the tune of vulnerability is strength. And you said it earlier in one of our conversations that Mm -hmm. when we are vulnerable, people open up to us and it creates deeper connection. And if we have that deeper connection, we're going to be a better leader because people are going to want to follow us Mm -hmm. and know because they know that we care. Yeah. And you are, you are a great example of that because whenever you are around, you're always expressing gratitude. I see you express gratitude and appreciation for people on a regular basis. And that Mm -hmm. is, is such a, that's an incredible leadership quality, you know, someone who shows their appreciation. So I appreciate, I appreciate that about you. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. So if you could share advice with a younger leader, maybe she's just starting out in her career in the ministry world, what would you tell her? It's definitely trust your gut and that you know more than you think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's so many things that I learned that I missed opportunities because I didn't do that. And and I will share one quick story. Right after college, I went straight into a performing group. So I was traveling around the world for four years with people, the cast of 150 people in a group called Up With People. And in our staging time in Tucson, Arizona, imagine 150 people standing on stage, sitting around on risers and getting direction from the director. He realized that he missed assigning a part to someone. And it was a speaking part. Most of it was singing and dancing, but he goes, who wants to do the speaking part? And I immediately wanted to raise my hand. I still get like, I still get emotional (sighs) now because I didn't. Mm. And then the woman, the girl next to me, raised her hand and she had that speaking part the entire year that we were traveling in every wow. show she spoke and I missed out on that mm. yeah, because yeah. I hesitated. Mm. So trust your gut. That's a great piece of advice for the younger leaders listening. Well, for all of us, really. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for all of us. <laughs> that's right. Right. All right, Karen. Well, thank you so much for all of the insights you shared. I would love for people to be able to connect with you after this conversation. I'm sure they're going to want to. So what is the best way for someone to connect with you? And then is there a free gift or anything you'd want to point people to, to learn more about what you've got going on? Yes. Well, the free gift is called nine words to avoid and what to say instead. And that is on my website at karenlaus.com. So my name is K-A-R-E-N-L-A-O-S.com. I'm also on Instagram a lot at Karen Laus Consulting. And then I have a podcast called Ignite Your Confidence with Karen Laus. And that is also the same name as my Facebook group. So I know I'm saying a lot of options there. (laughs) (laughs) We will put them all in the show notes so people can click over to whatever your favorite platform is and connect with Karen. And again, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. You're so welcome. It was great. Hi, friend. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Christian Woman Leadership Podcast. We're so glad you took the time out of your day to listen, and I truly hope that it made an impact on your ability to lead well. If it did, would you consider sharing this episode with a friend? You could take a screenshot of the episode and share it on your social media, maybe an Instagram story or on Facebook, or you could just text the link to a friend. We would truly appreciate that as when you share with a friend, it helps spread the word about the podcast and it helps more women to be able to be impacted so that they can lead and love others well. Now, don't forget your leadership matters and it's time for you to embrace your gifts and lead with confidence. 